Hello again, it's Ann Hagen here in beautiful Missoula, Montana, welcoming you to another podcast. Our last podcast, I was up here also doing the same scenery podcast. Well, that made a lot of sense. I was up here speaking to you our last podcast, but it's another beautiful day, and so I thought, let's do it again up here. You know, I love living in Missoula, Montana. Um, it, it has mountains all around it. It has four seasons, and obviously right now we're in our winter. I don't know if you can see any of the snow behind us or not and see our beautiful mountains, but uh, it's gorgeous. But this time of year, you start, we start to hear everybody saying, gee, I can't wait for spring. So spring will be coming right when we need it, right when we're ready for the warm weather. And some of you are probably in really warm places and are thinking, I'm glad I'm not up there, but it's really pretty. I, I love living up here. Um, today, I wanted to talk to you about listening. Um, it's something that I struggled with a lot and still today struggle with. I tend to want to give my opinion really quickly. Um, I tend to want to share my heart or my response um, with somebody I'm communicating with really fast. And one of the things that um, the Lord has really done a work in me is listening to others and not giving a really quick answer and trying not to interrupt. I, I, you'll notice from interviews from other podcasts that you'll, uh, there I am interrupting somebody. Trust me, I'm more aware of it than anybody. But the thing that the Lord is showing me is that um, people learn their value by how well we listen to them. You know, the greatest commandment is that we love one another. And if, so, if I'm talking to somebody and they're interrupting me and they're, I feel like they're not listening, I feel like I really don't have value in their heart as far as I'm, I'm not, in what, you know, they're, they're distracted. They're not wanting to hear me. They're thinking of something else. And sometimes I can understand that because I tend to ramble on and I could see why somebody would want to interrupt me. But the scripture that I'm reading to you today from, is from James 1 and it's um, verse 19. I'm just going to read it to you and you can get out your book and follow it along or check it out later. And everything I read from is from the NIV. Um, he says, uh, my dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. And then it goes on to talk about anyone who listens to it but doesn't do what they the word says is like a man who looks in a mirror and then when he walks away, he forgets the image he saw. And so I know what the Lord is saying there, as you do too, is that it's so important that we don't just read the word, that we do the word. Otherwise, we're hypocrites that I can tell you all about the Bible. I can tell you what I've read. But if you don't see me living that life, you know, there's, there's no fruit in that. There's no, there's no, that's not a, a powerful testimony to anybody. And so when the word tells us to be slow to speak, to listen, and not to get angry, this is something that challenges us because we are women that are emotional. God made us that way for a reason. And uh, one of the reasons that God made us emotional is because he's an emotional God. He made us in his own image. He understands our emotions and he loves us and he, he loves us the way we are but he also wants to temper those negative emotions and behaviors in us so that he is glorified through whatever we say or whatever we do. I know that one of the hardest things that we do as women is, if we have children, is listening to our children, listening to our husbands. The people that are the closest to us are the people that we tend to tune out or assume we know exactly what they're going to say. We interrupt them and we give them our opinion or our response right away. And a lot of times what that does is it, it sets our, our children up to behave the same way with others and we're going to end up reaping what we've sown with them. I want to encourage you that, especially with your family, to start practicing taking the time to listen. Listen to your children, even if you don't like it. 
if you, if you disagree with it, hear what they have to say. You're the boss. You have the last word with your kids. You should anyway, if you don't. <laughs> but the thing is, is that from a young age, especially when they're really little and that five-year-old inquisitive, constantly coming to us with questions about everything over and over. And we really get tired of not now, stop bothering me. You know, you know it, it drives us nuts. But I want to encourage you to take the time once a day, especially with your little, little children, to listen to what they have to say. And your rewards will be wonderful. I have three kids. You know, Michael's my oldest, he's 27. Joshua's my middle son. He's 24 and he's almost 25. And Lindsay, my daughter, is the youngest and she's 23. And one of the things that I did growing up um, because I had a father who listened to me and communication was really important is I listened to my kids. And I made, I created an, an environment when they were little that as they grew, they always knew that they could come and talk to me. Always, no matter what. No matter what the problem was, no matter what the issue was, they knew they could come and talk to me and that I would listen to them. And if I didn't agree, I still let them share their heart. They learned that their opinions were important, that their feelings had value, and that God put inquisitiveness in them and that it was important enough to hear what they had to say. You know, that's one reason why the Lord t rebuked uh, um, his disciples and said, don't turn away the little children because they're valuable. And what happens is those things that the habits you have in listening to your children when they're little, they're, those are going to be the same habits when they're teenagers, when they're 13. And trust me, that's the age where you really want to hear what they're saying because that's when they don't want to come to you and tell you what's going on. And I was very fortunate because I didn't ever have that with any of the kids. All through their childhood, young adult life, and then their, where they are now, they would always come to me and always talk to me about their feelings, even their beliefs if they were struggling. And they knew that I would listen to them completely, that I didn't get angry, and that was probably the one thing I did right in, in raising my children, being as dysfunctional as I was, is I just had a heart to listen to them. And I'm sure it was because my dad listened to us growing up. And so I really want to encourage you to be quick to listen, slow to get angry, and slow to speak. With your, start with your children. Do it with your husband and make a habit where you do it for 21 days even. If, it, if you're the type of personality that you cannot do these things, it's hard for you, um, you want to interrupt, you get angry really quick, make it a conscious effort. Put it on a calendar that for 21 days you're going to be slow to get angry, you're going to listen, and you're going to be slow to speak. You're not going to interrupt is what that means, like I do so often. But if you do that and you make a conscious effort, what will happen will be wonderful. The Lord is going to bless you with a relationship with your children that you want in your heart. And, a, and by that 21 day, they're going to notice something different. They're going to notice that you're listening and then you're preparing your kids especially to know that they can come to you when something is going on and there isn't anyone else to come to. And, and isn't that what we want as moms? We want our kids to be able to come to us, you know, whenever they're going through something hard. We want to be prepared and we want to be able to handle it. And one of the best ways to prepare yourself for the future stuff your kids are going to go through is to start now by listening to them. Listen to what they have to say. You don't even have to have an answer. They just need to know that you listened. All you have to say is, I heard what you said. Let's pray about it or I'll be praying about it, and then I'll get back to you with an answer. And do it. It's really easy, and we make it so hard. I, I used to be so quick to get angry or frustrated with friends. I was pretty good with my kids, but with friends, I would, I would give them my you know, thoughts on the situation right away. And, and uh, the Lord really taught me that if I would listen to my friends, like I would even my children or my husband, what happened was, 
I ended up getting a handful of really good friends that I still have in my life today that I know will listen to me, that I know I can speak to, and they really hear me and they have my best interest at heart and they'll pray for me. And so um, things, no matter what's going on right now, things will get better. You have the Holy Spirit in you, so you have the ability through the Holy Spirit to change the way things are right now with your children and with your husband. It's really simple. I'm just reminding you to put these things into practice right now and trust the Lord to see that He's going to change things and make, sure, make your family the family that you long for in your heart. So that was a pretty simple word today, but I thought it was something somebody needed to hear. And so I just want to encourage you to uh, just hang in there and I'll see you for our next podcast. Be blessed.